Hello. Uh, welcome to another devlog for the gothic novel game jam that I'm doing. Um, I've been putting off recording this because I don't really have anything particularly interesting to show over the last week or so. I've been um, editing a whole lot of images to make them into the, the layers that I showed you last time. Uh, for different scenes. I've currently done about 18 or 19 of those and um, I'm aiming for a minimum of 20 although I think on my list I've got about I think I've got 22 which I need. There's a whole bunch of optional ones if for if I have time but once those 22 are done I've got enough to to cover the story and in addition to that I've been doing a bunch of writing um, and neither of those are particularly interesting to show you. Um, so I'm going to give a little peek at the menu screen as it is and, um, and then like talk a little bit about the writing that I'm doing, which, uh, might be a bit spoilery. So if you're interested in playing the game, which is a story game, um, maybe switch off before that bit. Um, but anyway, um, where are we? This is the, this is the main menu as it is so far. And this is maybe the title of the game. I'm not sure about that because It's a bit obscure and pretentious and not gothic. Um, I don't know, but I've been trying to think of, um, of titles and struggling, and that's the best I've got so far. And uh, that's it. That's the, that's the menu. It's got this perspective shift effect in it, and um, it's going to have some settings. And none of these buttons do anything yet. So that's that. Um, okay, I'm going to switch over to ink, and this is where spoilers maybe start. Um, so, this is the, um, the inky editor for, for writing stuff in ink. It's um, hmm. there. I am. It's um, I don't know that I use it very well. It's uh, it's really good. It's really powerful. It can do everything I want it to do. Um, but I feel like maybe I'm bodging it a bit. Mostly as far as formatting goes, and I find it quite hard to get um, get my line breaks and things in where I want them. So my normal uh, way of doing things is to strip all of the, almost all of the white space, actually all of the white space out of this and then reapply it where I want to. And so then to, to do that, I need to use clues in the text to know where to put white space in. So one thing I use is this tag P break, uh, paragraph break. And the reason I do that is because so far at least, I haven't found a way to reliably get, um, to do indents, to do tabbing. Uh, in ink. So where I have a tag which says P break, I will then leave a line empty and tab the next line in in uh, in unity. And that's sort of standard uh, for me that that's that's the way that I, I do things in inky. Um, well, I should maybe start. Wider. So the way that the whole thing is constructed is that um, it's going to be a story which um, which sort of flits 
between little vignettes or fragments of bigger stories and um, each one sort of uh, fundamentally out of a gothic horror novel and then that's all constructed sort of semi-randomly as you play so the story will, will say something like uh, here we go uh, he prevaricated a while, feigning a sudden loss to previously dimension, uh, demonstrated linguistic deafness before embarking on a tale in a futile attempt to elucid elucidate things. And then the story diverts to fairy tales. And here on the left, I have a bunch of different sections. And in fairy tales, there are, well, three unfinished fairy tales. Um, but there won't be a specific fairy tale to go to. It'll pick one of them. And so far I've got um, letters, uh, fairy tales, uh, artifacts, which is like how you find an artifact. I've also got memoirs or diaries. That's another bit. So each of these types or genres almost um, will we'll have a bunch of different possibilities in there and it'll Blah, 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 blah. You know, blah, 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 blah. there's a problem with not editing these things. Um, so anyway, the um, in order to get there is a beginning and middle and end to this story, but the sort of the way that it gets between each of those parts will vary. And um, I've planned out like a minimum number of these elements that I need in order to make it work, um, which is about twenty. I don't know, I've got a list somewhere. I need about 24 individual story bits to plug together and I'm working my way through writing all of those. Uh, it's from these bits that I'm writing that the, the demands for the different locations, the scene, the images comes from. And so that 22 images that I talked about before is the kind of the minimum I think I need to fit into all of these 20-ish stories. And again, if I have time later, I'm going to um, do more. So one of the things the story does is it changes scene. So this tag here, SCN scene village one, will tell the will tell the game will tell Unity to transition, do a scene transition from wherever it is now, which I may not know because it might depend on the previous story into into the village. And, um, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, I'm using also special characters uh, to do some stuff. I was finding tags not, um, not useful for everything because it may be that I don't 100% understand how the, the ink interpreter is dealing with tags, but it seems to me that it's not predictable when a tag gets read. And so it's very hard to do precise things with them. For example, what I really wanted to build was a timing system where the text can make pauses. Um, and I initially did that with tags. I had a bunch of tags, each relating to a different period of time that the game would pause for and when it hit a tag it would pause. I found it really really hard to control that. So I've changed that system instead I use a dollar sign because there's no dollars in my game and um, when it hits a dollar sign it's going to pause and one dollar sign is one um, I don't remember how long a uh, certain number of milliseconds pause and if I want more I stack them on top of each other so I've got to here and I'm trying to I haven't tested this text yet so um, undoubtedly when I actually run it through the game this is all gonna like the precise location of these things is going to change but in general um, I'm treating a pause like the sort of unit of a pause as like a comma in text that if you're reading aloud and you hit a comma that's how long you would pause for and the game will kind of do that for you I mean adjusted so that it's not annoying and all that kind of stuff and then 
two dollar signs is a full stop and three dollar signs is a more significant shift and four is the maximum I'm using so far. I use four for things like scene transitions if I want to like properly stop the text for a while to move from one place to another. Um, and so yeah that's why you see random characters sort of dotted in the text. I removed my pack, rested it on a rock while I waited for my porter. Pause. Half an hour passed and there was no sign of the fool. And this is an example of a pause where maybe I'll make it longer to, because there's a real pause in the story as well as a, a thing. And I'm not rigid about what, what I said before, the, the sort of the comma full stop idea is a, is a starting off point and embarking point, not like the, a rule or anything. I also... Uh, there's maybe none here, but I also use a couple of other. Oh yeah, here we go. So here's a upside down question mark, which I use to do a tab, just a tab without a, without a line break before it. Um, what else is there to talk with? Oh, I should point out I haven't spell checked or you know proofread any of this, so no need to point out any errors. Um, Ah, okay, yeah, choices. So, I want there to be choices in the game, and I want the narrative to be branching to an extent, but my experience of writing branching narrative is that I'm terrible at it because I want there to be a hundred branches, and I want every branch to be meaningful, and um, it to, you know, spawn out into a, an infinite number of choices, and that's absurd and impossible, and nobody can do that. Um, and so if you're going to make something that really gives choices, you have to, uh, like real choices that sort of make a difference. Cause I've got plenty of fake choices. And I'll cover that in a minute, but you have to limit yourself somehow. So I've given myself this very strict rule, well, a couple of strict rules. One is that. I only put two physical buttons on the screen, so there can never be more than two options uh, when you have to pick. You never get three things to pick from, which could be frustrating, but in fact is a great uh, limitation. Because the temptation to put a third one in there always exists, and uh, now it's been removed because my, my user interface can't do three things at a time, so I can't do three things at a time. The second one um, is that in every like story block, uh, every um, fragment of my story, I allow myself one meaningful choice. Never more than that, because if there's more than that, it'll spark off into infinity. And so um, here's an example. So this is a story about climbing a mountain and finding a strange artifact um, and the story starts and you're climbing the mountain and it's hard you've been promised that there's something special at the top here is uh, not a choice but just to continue and this here is it looks complicated it's not really it's a choice which will only conditionally appear and I'm going to use these in order to guide the. Hmm, how do I do? How do I describe this without being super spoilery? Um, hmm, that's a little hard. So I'm using these conditional choices uh, because I don't know at what point in the story you're going to hit any given block of story. And so when I want to transition you out of the the early game, the act one, into the act two and then into act three, sort of, they're not really acts, but, you know, beginning, middle and end, um, I have to do that with these conditional options. Now, it's always an option, so I can't guarantee that you're going to hit it. And so it's totally possible to never hit these things and... If you 
If you don't, the story will still progress because it's counting how many um, how many bits of story you've seen and it'll still reach an end. But there are some optional bits that you'll miss if you if you never divert down one of these um, like special nodes in the story. Um, I don't know how many there are going to be. That will sort of rely on time. At the moment, there is one and a half optional bits. And we'll see. We'll see uh, where the other stuff comes in. So anyway, this is a thing that you'll see a lot. And you'll see it a lot because it's, um, it's conditional as to whether it appears or not. And once it's appeared and has been chosen, it'll disappear again and, and never come back. So you're climbing the mountain. Uh, you see something strange, but you're suffering from lack of oxygen, etc. And here is the choice that you get in this whole section of choices. You can continue climbing up the mountain to reach the peak, or you can stop and wait for your porter who is lagging behind. And if you, if you stop and wait, you get this text, and if you continue, you get this text. If you continue, you get to the top and there's nothing special there except for a little stone that you pick up. You go back down to the guy who told you that the, the mountain was super cool and he tells you a story. And if you wait, you wait for a long time, your porter doesn't turn up, you go back down to find him. And then here's an example of how I sort of put fake choices in. So this is the real choice. But here, I removed my pack and rested. Uh, I couldn't see my thing, he didn't appear. And now is the choice. You can go down and find him, or you can resume your ascent. Well, this is the same as the previous choice. If you resume your ascent, you get a chance to get back on this, this track. And if you continue downwards, really you're continuing within this, this section. You descend, you find a cave, and I haven't finished writing this bit yet. And you find something in the cave. And that's the end of that section. So, you can diverge in two different things, but only two different things. And every other choice is a, is a fake choice. Uh, there are other types of fake choices, not in this story, I don't think. Um, sorry about that, I got completely lost, I don't know what I'm talking about, and uh, so I have had to come in and cut this. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back to writing, and um, thanks for watching. Um, toodaloo!